we don't talk about soybeans between now and harvest for a reason because we know better. So if you're going to watch this video and assume that I'm going to give you a true outlook on my yield guess, just pause it and wait for the next video. But I'm just going to share what I'm seeing, some of my concerns and some of my optimism for soybeans. So we start off the year really slow. We did have a lot of April planted beans, and I think we took advantage of a lot of the sunlight during the reproductive periods. Unfortunately, we didn't have the rainfall during a lot of this reproductive period so far to really capitalize on all that sunshine. We started these beans really slow. Obviously, the residue had a lot of issues with these beans coming out of the ground. The lack of evenness is showing up in some fields. These are three feet away, and they're completely different plants, different stages and different looking plants. Um, just the, the change in populations as you go through a row is so drastic. But we started these beans off slow and we had cool soils and we didn't mineralize a lot. And I think some of this is really adding up. We didn't have a lot of nutrient uptake early for that first 30 to 45 days. Sure, we got the roots down in June when we had it dry, but we didn't have the rain to come with it. We had a lot of sunlight penetrating down in the canopy. So we stacked a lot of nodes. We don't have a lot of tall beans. Um, we have some beans that still haven't even canopied, but I think honestly that lack of uptake early um, with the lack of rainfall and that slow growth is a reason why we're seeing a lot of drastic patterns in fields. I think most of them are sulfur tied. If we start looking at tissue tests in these, in these areas or these operations or these fields where we have less sulfur applications, or maybe you're just using, you know, elemental and maybe not using a sulfate form, some of that is adding up. There are other parts of the field that are just low fertility and tough soil types that are just kind of given up. Now, I don't think we're drastically drier through my whole geography, generally speaking, than any other of the last four or five dry years we've had. But these patterns are really showing up because the lack of uptake that we had early. I think we're seeing that detriment and that's starting to add up. And I truly think that this year, you know, with this dry period and these beans so far moved along, I've got more beans in R5 than I ever have before for the first week of August. There's a lot in R4, but there's a lot moving to R5. And so we've moved these beans along and normally we see the sulfur deficiencies show up around the state fair and after these beans are moved so far along that they're starting to develop some seeds. The seeds need protein. That protein is developed with sulfur and certainly nitrogen. I'm not really thrilled that, you know, despite having a lot of nodules on these plants in some areas, some are just average. I think a lot of these nodules stalled out in this dry period at the wrong time. So that's normal in a dry year. It's just something that's adding up right now. But if you look at some of these tough spots and fields, a lot of sulfur, but there's plenty that are just low fertility and low pH. Okay. And that's adding up. These tough soils show it anyway in most years. But I think the floor is really coming down and really falling on some of these fields and, and, and it needs to be something we need to track. And if you see patterns in fields, start talking about sulfur um, for fertilizer. Let's, let's talk about your sulfur source and your timing and your history on a field. But then general fertility, I don't want these patterns showing up in corn the next year. So let's start talking about fertility. We certainly have residue patterns that are causing more issues because some of those areas with high residue, we didn't get our roots down at the right time. So we didn't have as much uptake. So the residue is causing that issue. But then also we can see some fertilizer patterns going on. And as you go through a field, you can kind of see where the, the fertilizer spreader was maybe not quite spreading as evenly. And it follows some of those patterns. But Again, a lot is driven by soil type and a lot is driven by just, you know, different management factors throughout the field that can add up in different ways. But either way, I, I'm not thrilled with the pod count I'm seeing right now for the stage of the crop, for the time of the year, this is a normal pod count. But as we move these beans along, we don't talk about moving beans along too fast, but you know, your R4 stage will last like, you know, nine, 10 days. We move, we use that and we moved on to R5 with a lot of these early planted beans. R5, it's going to be on average about two weeks, but we could be right at two weeks or we could be, you know, at three weeks. And we ideally want three weeks because we still got a lot to let to, to finish in this crop. We've got average pod counts. We've got some to finish on there. We've got the final cluster showing up and this is showing up maybe a, a node or two shorter than normal. So we may not have the full node length on these beans, but we have enough to work with. We've got great pod counts. As you look at that lower part of the canopy, I'm worried about the top here finishing if you've been dry. Um, which is a lot of the geography, you're going to have a lot of two bean pods, maybe in this top cluster, and you may only have one or two that finish out to pods. Whereas down here, you're going to have two to three per cluster and high yield, you have four to five per cluster. And you also reflower sometimes late in the year on some high yield soybeans. So I'm still holding optimism that if we get a large seed size and we change that 3000 seeds per pound down to 2,500 seeds per pound, 
we can get a sneaky yield for soybeans, and we've seen that in dry years. But I'm holding that optimism until we get some more rain. To be cautious on the bean, these bean fields, we've got a floor that kind of fell out with fertility levels that are being exposed in some fields and just the lack of uptake and the slow start. And, and these beans still have a long ways to finish. So I just said some concerns and optimism in the same video like a normal agronomist would do in August, but understand that um, they're really tricky to pin down. And we have a lot to finish and a lot of factors to assume at this point until we get some more rainfall. So if you have any questions on fertility, or where your soybeans sit, or if you have any concerns on these field patterns, let us know and we'll talk. Thank you. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.